Good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse. I serve as the student ministry pastor. I need all of you to do me a favor. Uh, just set the tone for me. I need you all to pull out your phones, start talking to the people to your left and your right, and doodle in the back. Uh, it, it'll be just like youth group, and then I'll be super comfortable. Uh, all jokes aside, our kids are amazing. I love the students. Um, they do listen really well, and they receive uh, really well. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, how many of y'all played sports in high school? Good amount of you. Anybody wrestle in high school? I did. I started wrestling in high school because my uncle, he was a pretty good wrestler. My dad, he was a great wrestler. And uh, I just wanted to be just like them. Uh, at our school in Cortland, if you got a certain amount of wins at the end of your career, you got your name painted in the wrestling room. And uh, I wanted to be like some of the names on the wall, and I wanted to secure a legacy for the Towers family and get my name on that wall. Uh, I found out pretty quickly, though, as I started moving through uh, my career as a wrestler, I wasn't that good. I was all right. I did middle of the pack. I wrestled some crazy good kids and lost to some really bad kids. Um, but I fought every single time I went onto that mat, fought every single time because I wanted my name on that wall. And eventually, I did it. I got my name on the wall at our high school, and I left behind a legacy for the Towers family. So I'm sure that, like myself, many of you wanted to leave a le want, many of you want to leave a legacy of some sort, whether it's a healthy family line free from addiction or traumas in, in your generations, uh, a financially stable future for your kids. Maybe you're younger and you want to leave a lasting legacy in sports at your school or be the first in your family line to go to college. We all want to leave a lasting legacy of some sort. So as I was preparing for this message, I was reading First Chronicles. Uh, how many of you have read First Chronicles? It is an absolute slog to get through, especially in the beginning, because it's all genealogy. It's name after name after name after name, until you get to verses 9 and 10 in chapter 4. And it says this, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. So as I read this, the question I had was, why out of this genealogy of nearly 600 names was Jabez given a paragraph? All it says is that he was more honorable than his brothers and that his name means pain. Yikes. It wasn't about who he was or what he did, but it was because of how he prayed. Imagine that you prayed so earnestly and so faithfully that it became your entire legacy. But you're probably asking yourself, what about this prayer was so impactful that God decided to answer it? It was his wholehearted devotion to lay his desires and needs at Jesus' feet, knowing fully that he will set him on the right path. Jabez was not using this prayer as a formula to get something from God. He was calling upon God to help him accomplish it the promises of God. So if we can learn to pray like Jabez, it'll change our life and our legacy. So we got to move through this super quick, but let's break this down. Write these down with me, okay? Number one is blessing. Jabez begins his prayer by asking God for his blessing. In fact, God wants to bless us, but he's often waiting for us to ask with the right heart. When God blesses us, our lives overflow with abundance in every area. Number two is influence. Jabez asks for more influence. As God's blessings increase in our lives, we can ask for and experience greater influence, and we can have the opportunity to change the world around us for him more. So number three is presence. As we ask for God's blessing and influence, we also need to ask for God's presence so that we're not operating out of our own strength, but through the, pre through the presence of God. Acknowledge your need for God's presence. Ask for his anointing and for him to put his hand on your life. And finally, number four is protection. Jabez asked the Lord to protect him. If we're influencing the world for Jesus, we must understand the enemy will try to stop us. God promises to be with us and protect us. And because he is with us, we have nothing to fear. Can you imagine what it would be like if we all prayed in this way? As our lives overflow in abundance in all areas, so would our ability to be a blessing to others. Our communities would be on fire for Jesus as we stepped into our God-given purpose. Our influence would change family legacies, cities, and governments because our relationship with Jesus would be the strongest it's ever been. His prayer reminds us that we can turn to God in prayer and ask for his blessings, protection, and guidance in our lives, no matter the circumstances. And if we can learn to pray like Jabez, I promise you, it'll change your life and your legacy.